This week on Dark Water Outdoors, we head to Bayfield, Wisconsin to fish Lake Superior, the largest freshwater body of water in this world, for trout, salmon, whitefish, and herring. Spoke a little too soon, though. There he goes. Good shake, good, good big head shakes. Oh yeah, here he is, right here, bottom hole. Ooh, that's a nice fish, big fish. What do we got there? That is a giant white fish. Whoa. That's probably the biggest white fish I have ever seen. Oh man! Woo! I didn't even know these things got that big. Oh! Wow! Absolutely! Look at that white fish! Whoa! I will take those anytime. Look at that. Uh, after a, a quick and fast and furious fight there, we got this uh, giant whitefish on the ice. I'm, I'm sure they probably get a little bigger than that. You know, I guess I'm not, not real familiar with them. More familiar with the, with the trout than I am with the, uh, the whitefish. But uh, comparatively, I, I think that's, that's pretty big. Um, yeah, I guess to take that, that, that'll go in the smoker, that'll eat real good. Where? It's going down now, what's he doing? Oh. Oh yeah, I, I got him on the, there he is. See him? Yeah. Oh. Boy, that was kind of exciting. <laughs> all of a sudden we go from, okay, we're going to catch him jigging to, all of a sudden my rod's going down the hole. <laughs> I hope we caught that on the GoPro, got that. Ooh, got some nice runs. Definitely a trout. There he goes. Just trying to keep uh, keep the line off the hole on the bottom there. Oh, no, he's still there. God, they give you such a heartbreak because they can go from full tension to the slack line in just a matter of seconds. Come on, trying to keep that line off that edge there. It's a nice trout, whatever it is. <sighs> got some good runs in them. There we go. Come on, baby girl. Come on, stay off the edge. There you go. Come on. Oh, there we go. That split shot. Saw the hole. Oh, yeah. Nice brown. Nice bro. Come on. Browns are the worst. You get them right to the right to the hole and they just freak. But this one's been fighting hard the whole way. Come on. 
Turn around. Come on, turn around, girl. It's a really nice brown. God, just getting all twisted up there. There we go. Come on. Stop. There's a coal. There we go. Nice brown. Whoop. Got my jacket going down the hole. I'm just a mess. There we go. Beautiful brown. That was a fight and a half there. She actually uh, ended up twisting so bad down at the bottom of the hole that she uh, ended up helping me out there. Kind of hindered herself from from taking any more runs. So I was able to get her to the hole and scoop her out. Perfect, perfect. If you guys never tried it before, I highly suggest you get out on uh, the Great Lakes and give this a shot. Um, you know, what we were doing here is, is nothing out of the ordinary. It's just a dead stick, typical dead stick. So we gotta get back down right away because normally these fish come by in schools. So we're gonna catch one. There's a really good chance within a five to 10 minute window you can catch another one or maybe two or three. So we're gonna get back at it here. These fish are a lot harder to a lot harder to catch, uh, a lot better eaten. But that fight right there, that's I mean that's really, you know, I could give up I could give up pretty much fishing anything else to come out here and and you know and fish these pick up one one a day, and uh, and be more than happy. Got him. That was cool. Come on, stay hooked. Stay pinned. Stay pinned. Should be coming up here pretty quick. I think it's a white fish. Oh, what do we got? Oh, little guy. <laughs> that is a small little white fish. That's pretty cool though. It's fun when they can follow it like that. I don't think he was going anywhere. I don't think you can get a hook any, uh, you gotta take a look at that. He took all three. Isn't that unreal? Who is not going to lose him? Now today I'm gonna to go over my setup and what I've been doing the last two days and my main lure has been a little Cleo spoon. Now the reason that I've been using a little Cleo spoon is number one, it's a heavier spoon. We've been fishing in a lot of current and because of that current, if you fish a lighter spoon, it causes your spoon to drift out of your sonar. And when we're searching and hunting fish in the water columns, it's really important to be able to pick up your bait. Number one, you can target. Number two, these fish feed up. So you gotta get above them. Gotta get them start chasing. Just like today, a lot of our fish are eating three feet below the uh, hole of the ice and we picked them up at 30 feet of water. The other thing that I like about the little Cleo is it's a wider body spoon. And because of the wider body, when you tip it with a lake shiner, as that spoon falls, has a really nice wobble side to side. Now that action was really good this morning. Fish really liked it, salmon liked it, trout liked it, but then this afternoon, dead. And that's when Tony's lure picked up. And Tony's gonna talk about what he's using and how his spoon varies from mine. The other thing that I use is I like using a non-stretch braided line, but I use about an eight foot leader. And about 18 inches, 20 inches, that's probably more like 28 inches, above my uh, lure, I throw a ball bearing swivel. And that swivel is really important for me. The reason being is as that wider little Cleo is down there catching current, it causes that spoon to spin and spin and spin and spin. And you can get line twist that travels up the line create a big rat's nest and you can end up losing a fish. Now most people would use a uh, swivel connected to their spoon. I elect not to. I like to use, if you can take a look at that, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, probably not, but it's a fly tie. Extremely strong. People catch king salmon on these fly ties. And that's what I'm using one more one is I just don't like how a ball bearing swivel on the lure affects the action of the bait. I think it makes the nose heavy, heavy 
and that's just something that I just don't prefer when I'm fishing spoons. So again, take home message today is different types of spoons and the different type of equipment that you're gonna to need to fish those spoons. Just wanted to go over what I'm using. Uh, you know, we, we touched base on uh, Jim's uh, Clio there that he's using, that silver Clio. So I'm using a little bit something different. It's new from Northland Tackle here this year. It's a, uh, it's a gold spoon, but what they've done is they've taken this glow stick and added it in there. It just kind of eliminates the need to um, continuously, you know, light your bait up. It's, they're not too bad. Uh, the glow sticks run out in about, you know, four to four to five hours and replenish them. Uh, but they really seem to be liking that, that, uh, you know, that Northland spoon there. And something I've, I've found important is to, um, is really, is really these hooks is either switch them out or, or take and, and actually do a little bit of maintenance on them and get them nice and sharp. Um, you know, some of the some of the tackle companies are a little bit better with with putting these with putting good hooks, but but uh, having a good sharp hook, good good barbs is going to make the world of difference when you hook into that fish and and uh, keep it on your line. Oh, he's like four, I don't know, four foot below the hole maybe. There, oh come on, come on, come on, take it. God, that's a big fish. <laughs> oh, that's huge. Got him. Well, <laughs> another big school of herring in here. Man, these, these fish are exciting. Oh, you don't even, uh, all you do is sight fish them down the rest. I mean, I couldn't even, they're so close to the Vexlar, I couldn't even, I couldn't even hardly pick them up. Um, but a big school, probably uh, 30, 40 fish down there. But we better get back down there and try getting a few more of these real fast. Oh, there we go, got them. I don't know what it is. Man, did that thing come right up to the hole and just followed me the whole way. That thing came up, followed me all the way up to the hole. I was watching it slash at it, watching it slash at it. I didn't know if I was gonna get it, and then finally uh, missed it once, and the thing came back and drilled it again. That is awesome. I could come out here and I could get 10 of these um, over the course of a, a couple weeks, and I'd be happy. Slippery little bugger. Man, that's awesome. That's great. Oh, got that big clear spoon. There we go. Oh, nice. I'm just gonna get him off. Yeah, nice coal hole. Right. Hell yeah! Get back down there. What's that? Get back down there yeah. real quick. Try to get, try to capitalize on this school. That uh, that kind of happened fast and furious. We didn't really get much uh, fight on film, other than hopefully the GoPro. Uh, the coal literally ate 12 inches below the foot of the hole there, or a foot below the hole. That was uh, pretty intense. I just got to watch it. Hit a nice big. Uh, Cleo spoon again and uh, we had so many fish in the hole and we were hitting all our lures that we had to get right back at it again. Um, we had dead sticks going down, we had getting hits on our, our jigging rods and uh, hopefully another school of coals will come through here and we'll be a little bit better on the camera work but um, hopefully we can pick up a few more for the end of the day. This you're not going to believe. I just had to snap my line and do a line twist and I'm bringing this up hand lining in my deadline then we see a mark on the line oh my god please don't run too hard on me and uh i bring it up right to the hole and watch the fish eat the eat the minnow right underneath the hole come on i'm running out of line here because i had to cut my line you gotta be kidding me just thumping down there but i can't I'm not, not able to keep this fish off the side walls of the ice, obviously, because I don't have a rod. I think he's got everybody's line, mm -hmm. including my, my other one. Oh, come on. Okay, we're 
we're getting there. I can see a sinker. Oh no. Pre going pre spool that rod. The rod's gonna go down the mm -hmm. down the hole. You're good, you're good. Take by him. You're good, you're good. I got it. Here, I'll kneel on this rod. Oh he's off. I have everyone flying in in the house here. I don't know. I mean, right to the hole, last 18 inches. I'm sure use the ice and maybe something got hooked on the ice or, or the rod gave them tension to get off. I, I don't know. That, that sucks. That would have been, that would have been pretty cool. Now, now I got this. I don't even, don't even know whose line is whose and where it goes and Well, all we can do is get back down there. Oh, got him, got him. Oh, Crap. <clears throat> I'm all snagged up in the... <sighs> there he goes. <laughs> Oh yeah, big coal hole. Real nice big coal. Hole. Come on. Come on. Come on, stop, stop, stop. There we go, there we go. I think that's cold. Nope, that's a that's a white or uh, another herring. There we go. Transducer. Mm. Ah, uh, can you hold that? Yep. He's trying to peel drag. Yeah, he snagged around the transducer. Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Nope. Ah, uh, it's a big, big fish too. Come on, bud. There we go. Yeah, still here. Yep, I All can right. feel. Oh. Come on, head up, head up, head up, head up. Woo! Oh, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Scoop, no, no, no. scoop, scoop, scoop. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Thankfully, they're not like trout. Oh, holy, my goodness. Oh, intense, now that's intense. Uh, right, man, right underneath, right underneath the hole again. You could see them swiping at it. There must've been three, four of them though, uh, just ripping back and forth. And uh, finally, I just watched them swallow my jig, but I don't know if you could catch the action there. My, he ran so fast, wrapped around the transducer uh, probably three, four times, and uh, I actually had to had to hand the camera or hand the the uh, the rod off to Jim and and uh, untwine it and get it get it undone so that way we could we could continue to fight the fish. And I basically had to hand line it the rest of the way up there. Uh, but then the spoon unhooks in the hole and he's he's flopping around and I'm kind of soaked almost up to my elbow now. But but. Uh, it's definitely well worth it. I get them a little cleaned off here. And... Can't wait to get these in the smoker. <laughs>